Hello and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at a very beat up Akai. So it says parts on it and I'm pretty sure someone used this as parts before me because it's missing so much stuff. It's missing that bottom cover there. It's missing uh, every screw on that front panel. Doesn't have any of these kind of main knobs, uh, the control knobs. Not sure what you would call those exactly. The uh, one of these knobs are now missing as well. But overall, I do like it. I mean, it's absolutely filthy. It's it's probably the dirtiest machine I've ever gotten. I mean, this thing is absolutely encrusted in dirt and dust and who knows what else. Now, it does have built-in speakers, but unfortunately only... Uh, one of those panels is there. The other one is just gone. So again, I'm I'm pretty sure someone just you know took everything off this machine uh, to use for something else. And then this entire back panel is also missing. Uh, and you can really see just it must have been missing for a while because the inside of that machine is is completely encrusted in dust as well. Uh, and then. The, the, <laughs> this whole power pack transformer thing is just loose. There's just no screws holding that down either. So there's a serial number for it if anyone's in interested in that. So I'm going to plug this thing in and uh, see what we get. So you can't really see it, but it does light up. So I'll make it a little darker. And you can see those, those VU meters are very faintly glowing. And that might be a hint as to something else going on. We'll see if... How many of you can just guess that immediately? Because it took me a very long time to figure it out. And we do hear a little bit of crackling too on the on the speakers. Now it's set to mono, which I didn't realize at the time. So only that right knob is gonna make any noise. Um, so that is good though. That means you know we're getting an output on the speakers. Those speakers aren't blown. Now I'm gonna have to be using uh, pliers for quite a while to get those knobs to turn. So. I do chew them up a little bit, so I do apologize to any purists out there. So I'm going to put this on its back, which is nice actually, it has kind of angled feet, so it's very easy to put on its back, uh, just to make it easier to uh, to work on this. So I'm going to start by just taking the front panel off, and so I need to take this uh, knob off, and this knob's actually moving the recording head, which is pretty interesting. I'm not seeing this in anything else, and they are very proud of it. There's quite a bit of this worldwide exclusive cross-field advertisement all across the machine, but it, it basically allows you to record uh, on different tracks within the tape. I'm actually, I'm not super sure about that. I'm sure someone in the comments will give a great explanation as to the usage of that. I think it has to deal with like having four mono tracks or two stereo tracks, stuff like that. Now this wheel, I thought that actually that was just unbelievably worn down, uh, but it turns out that's actually to keep the cap stand sleeve in place. I've never messed with a machine that's used a cap stand sleeve, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but that is also missing from this because of course it is. Uh, but that's used to change the speed. Uh, you basically slip it over the cap stand, and it changes the ratio of the, you know, of of the uh, it changes the diameter of the cap stand, which changes the speed of the tape. Now, the first thing that stood out to me as being off is this pause button seems completely stuck. So that little lever up there, you push it up to pause the machine, and then presumably you push the button, and it pushes it out and, and drops it. And there I finally got it to go down. So I don't know exactly what was holding it up. I'm guessing it's just old grease. This thing is, is full of that really old grease that just almost turns to glue. Now, you can see I did get a little bit of life out of it after pressing in that switch. I don't know what that switch does yet, but pressing it, it makes it work. So that's, you know, nice, I guess. I'm not sure why that happens. And something just moved there. So that's part of the auto stop mechanism where uh, that whole thing spins and it pushes over the... Uh, yeah, you can see it's moved a little bit there. But everything in here is so gummed up and stuck, nothing's really working properly. Now, there's nothing explicitly broken, which is nice, but yeah, it's just uh, it's just really sluggish um, with that old grease. 
But otherwise, everything seems to be working pretty well. Stuff, stuff spinning now that they got the motor working. So yeah, that's great. And now it's starting up without even uh, hitting those buttons. So I don't know if those buttons just got something unstuck or what. But yeah, here's a better view of the actual transfer mechanism. It's pretty simple. It's just moving different wheels into the path of the motor. Uh, and it's, you know, causing it to fast forward or rewind, depending on that. So here's the tape heads of it. So my thinking at this point was like, well, I got to work in. Let's put a tape on it and see if that amplifier is working. Uh, so I'm cleaning the tape heads so that I don't just make my the tape completely disgusting. So I'm just using some isopropyl to, to wipe them down. And they're really actually not dirty. I was very surprised by that. Uh, you can see that Q-tip is it's barely picking up anything. And then when I was about to load the tapes, I noticed this. So this spindle clamp thing, I'm not sure what you would call it, but it's bent. So I'm pretty sure this thing fell over on its face at one point. So yeah, I'm just trying to bend it back and that definitely won't bite me. I'm, nothing bad will happen trying to do that. I'm certain of it. Yeah, look at it. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> So let's get, uh, let's get some reels on this and see if it works. So pretty standard tape feed uh, for Akai, I think. And get it turned on. There's that auto stop mechanism engaging. So you can see it pushes that pause lever up and that's how it works. It basically pauses the machine. And if I release it, there's nothing. I don't know what I was thinking. It's like, oh yeah, I haven't replaced the main belt. There, there's no way torque will be applied. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking there. But yeah, I got to take this apart and replace that belt before I can actually test it. Uh, so, like the other ACA I've taken apart, this thing is very nice and modular. Uh, basically, it's just these three main blocks, and it all plugs in together, and then you can just take it apart. So this top block, the mechanical block I guess you'd call it just has these four screws one in each corner and once you remove those and you unplug uh, a few plugs in the back it just slides out the front and so you can see that plug in the bottom left plugs into where the tape heads are so that's sending out the signal and the other one's getting the power to the motor and, and whatnot and there you can see those built-in speakers Now, this is just incredible. There was a plant that grew through this thing. That is something else. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that cracked me up pretty good. Wherever this was, it sat there for a very long time next to, I guess, a plant or something. Cause there's no way that was just stuck in there i mean it was wrapped around things yeah it, it it grew in there searching for i guess the sun so let's get the rest of these panels off pretty simple and i gotta you gotta love how they have the, the you know they're still printed on the panel itself so that you can troubleshoot it and then even have instructions as to how to remove it printed directly onto the the amplifier as well as uh you know a little bit of extra advertising you know, just something that the consumer would never actually see. <laughs> Talking about their world-renowned crosshead system. But once you get those five screws out, and then there's an extra one in the back, uh, it just pulls out the front, just like the mechanical block. And since there is no more screws left holding the power supply part in, it just pulls right out. Uh, and this, this thing is really dirty. Now, I'm not certain exactly what this is um it's been in there a long time i think it might be the original tag on the machine it, you know somewhere because uh, it has some japanese characters on it I'm, I'm not i'm not certain what that is though but yeah that's it all disassembled so i'm gonna start with this mechanical block first so it only has two belts in it uh, which is nice so it has just that small belt for the uh, tape counter and then there's a larger main belt that you can see on that uh, big flywheel in the center there so i'm going to start by taking that uh, flywheel out so it has this arm 
in this arm you can adjust those nuts on the uh, closest to us there and that'll apply more or less pressure on it uh, and I think that's just used to get it to in, in the right spot because otherwise it kind of it can float around on the shaft itself so try to remove this I see there's a few set screws I'll try to remove those and I notice there's a little ball bearing so that's a uh, that's usually you know it's almost like a ballpoint pin but for oil uh, so you put a little oil in there so I got that removed and because I just I didn't want to lose that because I could just envision that flying off somewhere so back around front here I took this little panel off or this little cover and the, yeah there's a little e-clip there it's kind of an awkward e-clip it was very wide so it took me a quite a few tries to get it off but I did get it off but eventually I, I, I gave up trying to, to film taking it off but now that that's loose it the whole thing can come up now but it's still hitting that little circuit board right there I think in the service manual this is the oscillator uh, for the motor so just a few screws to get that out of the way and I'll just pull it above the motor and now that's out of the way we can just pull it right out and it falls off the shaft because I removed those set screws earlier now I do I just love the parts in these old machines. They're just so well made. This beautifully machined uh, shaft with those uh, gears cut into the uh, into the side, almost like a spline. Now, next step to remove that belt was to take the motor off, but unfortunately, this screw refused to move. So I just ended up kind of destroying it while unscrewing it. And so I just had to drill it out eventually. So that blue thing there, that's a, that's a pretty strong neodymium magnet that I set there. Just, you know, trying to capture as much of these metal shards as I could. Uh, and it actually worked pretty well. I think there was a few that got, um, you know, flung elsewhere, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with that later. Yeah, but now that that's out of the way, it just pulls right up. So yeah, that was nice. And now that we can pull the motor up, we can get that belt out. So that's the belt we need to replace. It's uh, pretty stiff at this point. It's definitely not gonna transfer any torque. And uh, luckily for me, the screw wasn't actually stuck. It was the head of the screw that was stuck to that uh, top plate somehow. I don't know if that, I don't even think it was Loctite. I don't know if it just got kind of corroded in place, but, uh, and again, luckily I had just a screw that fit perfectly. Uh, so that, yeah, that was great. So I'm going to start taking off these front spindles, the, um, you know, the supply reel and the take-up reel. So this is the back of the uh, supply reel, so that is what attaches to the uh, tape counter. So I took that main pulley off, and now I'm just taking an E-clip out, and this little plastic nylon washer, and then that's a little spring. Uh, what are they? I don't even know if those are called, like, star springs or something like that, but that's just applying some preload. Uh, to the wheel and it's doing the exact same thing on this side but since there's no wheel they have this spring system with the washer and the the uh, little bushing almost and that applies some preload to this as well so with those out of the way we can just pull those out and a little washer I almost missed stuck to the the bushing there and get these out of the way as well so I'm taking these all out just to thoroughly clean them and um, get the old lubricant off of them and re-lubricate them when I put them back on. So they have all these uh, paper washers on them, or at least this one did. They're uh, not all like that though. It's just that bottom one that, that has the paper washer on the front. These other ones had it on the back. So I don't know if that's, maybe someone took this apart, put it together incorrect, but I don't know. I just left it as it is when I put it back together though. So that's the main flywheel all cleaned up. And so I polished the uh, outer uh, wheel there and just putting it back so I did put some oil on that shaft and it just drops into place so it does have to mesh with that auto stop mechanism and you can see I'm I'm turning it the wrong way and just grinding on that plastic gear so I, I stopped doing that pretty quick but there's the new belt get that in place and we got the motor in place now this was at the time when it really dawned on me just how filthy this thing was and how tedious it would be to actually clean this. I mean, it's caked on. And so I had a pretty good idea of how I was gonna clean this. So yeah, I just put it in the dishwasher.
It's good enough for dishes, good enough for reel-to-reels, is what I say. <laughs> I, uh, I did take that belt off again uh, before I put it in here, but yeah, I put it in for an hour cycle with soap and everything, and then I put it in the oven at a, at a low temperature for a little bit to uh, dry it off, and then I just let it sit for a day. And heck, I even threw the, the amplifier in there as well. You know, I'm, you know, I've already put that in there, so might as well commit with the, <laughs> might, as well, might as well commit with the uh, amplifier as well. And you can see how well it turned out. It actually shocked me how well that worked. I thought for sure I would destroy the VU meters doing this, but no, they actually turned out fine. And yeah, look at that. It's a night and day difference. And this is was so dirty i didn't even realize it was blue until after i cleaned it <laughs> so i'm very glad i did that and i mean look how nice it looks with a nice polished copper cover on it again and so i put it back together and i put the belt back on it again and at this point i'm hoping that it still works because i i put the motor in the dishwasher too i didn't take anything out and uh, yeah, it seemed to work just fine. So before I put these spindles back in, I completely disassembled them and, and cleaned them. And so I'm just gonna re-lubricate them and, and put them back together. So there's this big sandwich of uh, different clutches and these these felt pads so that it can, it can spin. And it, it has adjustments so you can put more uh, tension on it so it doesn't spin as easily. Um, but yeah, otherwise put back together pretty easily. So I did that to both of them. And just a little bit of oil on each of these uh, before I put these wheels back. So I used a, uh, a rubber wheel restorer on the edges of those just to take off that first layer of, of the rubber and make it kind of more grippy and fresh. They were actually not, they weren't too bad. I probably could have just avoided doing that, but I got the stuff, so I might as well use it. So I got those spindles back in place. And I had realized that I put the wrong washer on that. Let me know if any of you guys recognized me doing that because when I tried to put this in, I didn't have that copper, or not washer, I didn't have that copper U-clip. So I was kind of scrambling trying to figure out where it went before I realized, oh, it's, I put it on the front there. And got to put the take up, yeah, the take up reel in place. Now, before I fully try this thing out, the you can see just how kind of stuck that pause mechanism is it should really snap it down at least i think it should so i'm going to disassemble this and all of this needs to be re-lubricated anyway because you know it just went through a cycle in the dishwasher with some you know soap and degreaser and whatever uh, so yeah it definitely all needs to get uh, more you know new coating grease on it so I'm taking it apart as best I can. It's like, you know, I take one thing off. It's like, oh, I got to take this other thing off. And, and I realize, oh, I got to take this little arm off. And this arm is what uh, starts and stops that auto stop mechanism. And there's that plastic gear you can see in the back. And that's what, that's what interfaces with the spindle off of the flywheel. And so basically how that works is when that arm drops, it pushes that plastic gear into the the spindle which then rotates it the rest of the way and then it uses the power from that rotation to to push the fast forward or the rewind mechanism uh back into just the neutral position and also simultaneously pushes the arm into the pushes that pause arm up and pauses the machine and after re-lubricating and putting that all back together it, it's it's working way better so i'm glad i did that i'll tell you what there's nothing that makes you feel quite like an idiot than working on this stuff. I, I think I've had this apart for like two or three days now trying to figure out what was wrong with it. And now, let me show you what's wrong with it. So the problem I've been having is that this motor has absolutely no torque or speed or any power whatsoever. And so let me turn this on for you. And so it's not spinning. Oh, there it goes just came to life but I can just stop it. it it just there's nothing to it and so as soon as I would put a reel of tape on this it would just yeah slow down to nothing and so 
I've been messing around with it for so long, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. So in my process of repair, I ended up completely disassembling the motor to make sure that it all was good, and it was it was very clean. Uh, I had thought that maybe putting it in the dishwasher did kill it, but no, it seemed fine. I just re-lubricated, put it back together, still didn't work. I tested these motor capacitors. They tested out perfectly fine. They are exactly what they said they're supposed to be, and so I was kind of out of ideas. Now, I just want you guys to guess, what what could be the dumbest possible reason for my problems to be. <laughs> I'll just, I'll give you a guess, and the next shot, it's gonna be a really big hint. <laughs> Do you guys spot it? Yeah, I didn't touch this when I first started messing with this, because there was no back plates, so there was no reference for me to know which one it's supposed to be at. I assumed it was either the bo I assumed it was the bottom, um, which, I mean, even still, that's not correct, but that's correct enough, <laughs> but, uh, it's the top because because I decided to take it apart and actually look at which winding that this was going to and it turned out the one that this was connected across to was going to the 220 so this thing was getting powered under the assumption it was getting 220 volts out of the wall which it is not so that would explain why it had absolutely no power so let me switch this over and we'll see how it works now. Yeah, and you can see just how much brighter those those are. Um, you can't see it perfect on, on camera, but in, um, in person, it was almost immediately obvious that that was working better. Well, that thing that probably most of you were predicting I was going to end up doing actually happened. While trying to straighten out this spindle properly, get it nice and straight, I broke it. I snapped it clean off with threads. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty bad. We're going to have to fix that somehow. Uh, <laughs> so I had to just inevitably drill out those threads because they were stuck in there. So I, I, of course, I drilled out those threads and I did manage to salvage the threads. Um, <laughs> But before we do that, I'm going to deal with this amplifier. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with the amplifier. I'm just cleaning it. Um, so, I'm just, you know, spraying it down with some degreaser. There's this recording switch that's way at the bottom here. So, I got to kind of dig down to get that and get that cleaned off. But I didn't, to enunciate what kind of was happening before, I didn't really film it very well. When I fixed that pause mechanism, I was like, oh, okay, great. Now it's time to, you know, test it out. And I put some reels on it and it just didn't work at all. It's like, oh no. <laughs> so I just kept troubleshooting. It's like, hey, what possibly is going wrong now? And yeah, I, I was trying everything until it's like, I wonder if it's like, I don't even know how I thought of it, but it's like, I wonder if that's that voltage thing. And yeah, it was, it was expecting 200 volts out of the wall. Uh, and so, yeah, it's not that. I think I set it to 110. Um, because I'm actually not sure. I don't know why there's so many selections for it. It's like 100 volts, 110 volts, 120 volts. It's like, how many... There's not many... Like, there's no one in the world that uses all of those different types. And, uh, in the U.S., I, I just put it to 110. Although, maybe it should be at 120. I'm not sure. Let me know. I do love how this, uh, this amplifier is assembled, though. It has all these cards in it. That's how it's all put together these cards slot into each other and I'm giving just one uh, one quick little wipe down uh, the dishwasher dishwasher did a pretty good job as a whole but you can see it still left a little bit uh, on this especially because the you know the, this was facing up in it so you know the blast from the jets all went into the amplifier and the stuff was left uh, left alone but yeah let's uh, let's deal with that broken spindle so I'm just gonna make a new one so I took apart the uh, the right one, and I you know got a bunch of measurements, and yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna make a new one. So here I'm trying to get the sizing just right. This is uh, this is steel I'm turning it down, and this this little mini lathe does not do well with steel. So I get it close enough, and then I'll just get it perfect with some sandpaper because it's just a lot easier than trying to turn down such a thin thing. And so that's to where I got it to. Now I wasn't able to get that threaded so what i did is i just took a 
little bolt that fit on that spindle and turned it down so that it fit into the hole. And now I'm just gonna glue it in there. Uh, and you know, hopefully that works. And here is the, the real one on the left. So that's the not bent or broken one. Now I do need to carve a little slot in there uh, for the E-clip to fit into. I wasn't quite sure how to do this. Uh, I, there's no way I could turn such a small thing on this little lathe. So I just ended up filing with this triangular file uh, to try to get that correct. And I think that the spindle is a little longer than it should be, but that's no big deal. Uh, this doesn't have to be some kind of precision part. So I'm just using this permanent thread locker to glue the, you know, turn down bolt in there. And so far it's held actually, which it's pretty good, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I'll be curious to see if that ever, you know, if I ever just rip it out <laughs> from the spindle when I, I try to clamp something down at some point. Now what I'm turning down here is the capstan sleeve. So if you recall, that is also missing from this. Now, it was pretty easy to figure out the dimensions that this needs to be since the capstan itself is only three millimeters. And if we're going from three and three quarters inches per second to seven and a half inches per second with it on, then we know that it just needs to be double. Since we're doubling the speed, it needs to be double the diameter. So we're going from three to six millimeters. So the outside of that needs to be six millimeters and the inside needs to be three millimeters. And then I just file down one side in order for it to slot into it. Now, I'm gonna make some knobs for it too. So I got a big chunk of aluminum and, you know, lopped it off. And it became significantly easier to cut through this when I replaced the blade of my hacksaw. Should have done that originally. So they're just simple round knobs and I'm gonna knurl them. I've never actually knurled anything before I got this, this tool just for this job. Uh, so I'll be I'm curious to see how well this works on my mini lathe. So I just, I know you're supposed to go uh, slow with it and use a bunch of oil. Uh, and I don't want to put too much clamping force on it because it'll stall out this mini lathe, but you basically just clamp these these knurling wheels onto it and let it go. And it just, um, the lead screw will drag it across and it, it all uh, stays aligned. And it, it took a while. I think it did two or three passes, but it actually turned out super well. Uh, this Again, this is aluminum. There's not a chance I would be able to do this in steel. Uh, but after those were done, I just cut them to size, uh, you know, turned them to clean them, put a chamfer on them, and then drilled a hole in the side. Uh, a very, very crooked hole, but close enough. Now, it, it made such a mess doing this, but I think they turned out really well, especially for my first kind of real attempt at, at doing something like this. Um, and now that other knob that was missing the uh, the thinner one that's changing the uh, equalization. I just ended up copying the other one there and just printing it out. And so I printed out just a ton of them. So if anyone needs one of those knobs for some reason, uh, let me know. Uh, there'll be a link in the uh, comments to where you can get one of those. The the actual like play knobs that, that took so long for me to make those, there's no way I could <laughs> make more of those uh, to be that for that to be viable. But now that that's done, I'm going to start cleaning up the, the outside box here. So I'm going to start by taking all the hardware off of it. Now it's too bad this this handle really is pretty destroyed, but I mean, the, the carrying is done by that steel band there. So it doesn't, the quality of the leather doesn't really matter. I'll probably replace that at some point, but I just, I never got around to doing it. And this you know, th this box was, of course, just as filthy as everything else on it. it. The smells that get released when you start cleaning something like this are just unbelievable. I mean, it just, it smells so bad. It's like you're unlocking them. <laughs> and so, yeah, just lots and lots of scrubbing on it. There's few places where this fabric plastic material had gotten ripped up. So I just used some super glue uh, to glue it back down. And it, it worked, uh, it worked pretty well, actually. And the front panel of this, luckily the front panel wasn't, it really was in pretty good shape. The only real damage I can see on it is right there on that, uh, that frequency change. So it's like push in for 60 Hertz and push out or, you know, pull it out for 50 Hertz. It's kind of weird that they have that front and center on the machine. Cause you would never change that. Like, a, like <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It just seems weird. 
Now this little arm is actually a tape cleaner. I had to look that up, but yeah, you push the button and this little, there's supposed to be a piece of felt attached to it, but it'll, it'll clean your tape, which is kind of neat. I don't, I don't have any of those and I, I doubt you can get any, but uh, yeah, at the time that's, I guess a nice feature. Now, you know, it was when I'm cleaning this, I, uh, that's when I finally realized that this, uh, this top cover actually comes off. So that'll make cleaning a little bit easier. But now that's it's all pretty well cleaned up, I can start putting this all back together. So if you recall, this had no screws in it. And I'm pretty sure what it would screw in from the bottom and kind of thread into that metal tab there, but I didn't have anything that did. And so I made these, uh, I printed some thick plastic washers uh, and just bolted it. And that actually works super well. And yeah, now we just need to slide everything back into place. And plug it in eventually. We'll get it there. It basically is keyed in there because two of the pins are larger than the others, and so it did only fit in one way. But it's just almost impossible to actually tell which one is bigger because it's like a millimeter bigger. <laughs> and then we do the same thing with the amplifier, so that just slides into place and we'll screw it down. Front panel goes on. Now, if you'll recall, every screw was missing on this, and it took me a long time to find a screw that fit it, and it doesn't fit it super well. I don't know if this is some kind of weird Japanese thread. I used, I think 440 was what I found that fit, uh, but it didn't fit perfect, but it, it fit well enough to just, you know, clamp a front panel on. And this takes a bit of force to get back into place. But once it's there, we can lock it down with that uh, screw there. And sorry about the focus, but yeah, there's where the uh, capstan sleeve uh, st stows away right on there. And yeah, I think those knobs look actually really good here the original knobs um they weren't really even knobs they're more like levers they would have been there i mean i i couldn't find any and i think there was one but it wasn't the right color and also like 40 dollars. and considering i paid 10 dollars for the entire machine i didn't think it was worth it uh, and i honestly i think those these those suited super well it goes with all the other kind of uh aluminum or chrome knurled knobs so for that uh, 3D printed replacement knob though, I just took a little uh, silver Sharpie and just kind of drew it in on, on the, uh, the little silver part there. And that actually turned out super well. Uh, it's, it's obvious when you're really zoomed up with the camera, but I mean, from far, they look identical. So I was very happy with how that turned out. And if you recall, the original knob was on the left side there, but I switched it around because that that knob on the right actually has linkages that it's moving about. Uh, and since the knob I made was just a press fit, uh, I just put it on the 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 equalization change knob because that uh, doesn't really have any force on it. It's just moving a potentiometer. So I just got to get this last panel screwed back into place and then get all the uh, knobs on as well. This actually took quite a bit of time to get these all screwed in because they kept sliding around and trying to get them so that they're all aligned and also, you know, facing the right direction. Took a bit of time. Now I'm going to, before I forget, I'm going to demagnetize the heads. Um, so, yeah, not much to it. And don't worry, I didn't forget about that bottom cover, so I made a new one of those. I don't know what it actually looked like, but I just kind of made one up that that looks right. But otherwise, that's it. It's, uh, it's all done. So as always, I, I thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.